Salt Growers. That's right, it's another live stream show today coming to you on a Friday. Basically, why are we doing things on a Friday? Well, we're trying out a couple of new time slots for the uh, the actual shows themselves. So going forward into the new lab, I'm kind of toying with the idea that we're going to actually do sort of double tap weekends. Uh, maybe a Friday night and a Saturday night. We could do Saturday, Sunday. It's hard to say. I'm just trying to find a best, the best time show uh, window or the time window for the show that's going to be conducive to everybody around the world watching the show and having a good time. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's get back to the beginning here and say hi to everybody so far. What's happening, Julio from Denver? Good to see you. What's happening, Alex Squatch? Good to see you. What's up, Ethan Brisson? Welcome uh, or howdy back down to Virginia, buddy. What's up, yo pot daddy? How you doing? Good to see you, my friend. What's up, Kate Steyer? Good to see you. What's happening? Hello to you, Edward Evans. What's up? What's up, DK? How you doing? Greens and 373 Steel. Welcome to the show. Charles Hankins, welcome to the show, my friends. Uh, it's been a pretty uh, productive week here so far at Pond Squatch Growers. I was actually just working on planting a bunch of our seed sprouts just now. So we were uh, planted the pink kush. So we had 100% germ rate on the four beans of pink kush that we had going. Uh, so, man, you should have seen the rootlets on these things. I mean, I am I have shot a video, so that'll be released on Monday for everybody to see. But, man, the rootlets that came out of these things in 24 hours were big, thick, hairy. It was wonderful. Uh, we had 100% germ rate on those. 100% germ rate as well on the blueberry indica. So we've got some big, giant rootlets on that one. I just finished planting the blueberries there. Uh, and then we're also going to be... Um, planting the other one so i'll just tell you all the strains that we got so we got the pink kush we got a blueberry indica we've got bc big bud a classic from back in the hood days it's actually a sat dom hybrid based off of the big bud out of amsterdam which is it, it, that in and of itself is an indica dom but we got that one going it's a classic from back in the day the fun thing about bc big bud is it is a super producer she produces giant giant buds you know what i'm saying it's insane uh, then we're also got some blue Af blue cheese Afghani cross. That's going to be looking really sexy. I'm looking forward to that one. Blue cheese, beautiful strain. Cross with Afghani. It'll be interesting genetically to see what it does because cheese in and of itself, if you go back to the origin story of the true original skunk number one, actually has some Afghani in it. So we'll see how those genetics pair up. Another thing we're going to be doing, let's see, we did the pink kush. Yeah, blueberry indica, blue Afghani, BC big butt. What's the other one? Oh, we're popping some of the Bruce Banner as well. Uh, so, so far, 100% uh, germ rate on the pink, 100% germ rate on the blueberry indica, not 100% on the other ones, uh, but we're still hoping to see how those go. Uh, we got some more people joining the show here, so let's get back to saying hello to everybody. All right. What's happening, Clay? Yes, good to see you, buddy. All right. All right, Couples Cannabis Channel, what's up? Yes, I agree, it's been a long time. How you been doing? We're just gearing up for Lab 3. We take possession of the new lab, May 3rd, everyone. Two weeks, and then we get back into action. Uh, I'm very excited about getting the channel back up and running. We're slowly starting to get back into the thick of things. Uh, we released a new video on soil pasteurization for everyone yesterday because, uh, one, I had some soil to pasteurize, and I figured, hey, that might be actually a pretty beneficial video for all of you at home to take a look at. It's simple, it's easy, and it's a way to kind of get ahead, you know what I'm saying, without having the things coming to bust your way at, like fungus gnats, etc. Uh, what's up, Chris McGarry? What's up, Charles Hankins? Thank you very much, my friend. I also enjoy the hat. Uh, what's up, Lobster Boy? Man, it's been a while. How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. What's up? Dude, Southwest Detroit. Hell yeah. One of my buddy's uh, production companies is down in Detroit. Uh, Jigsaw Pruitt, man. He is a filmmaker down there. Right, yo pot daddy? I mean, you know, I'm really excited to see that a couple of the things had 100% germ rate that they did. The blueberry indica is always a big fun one. This is a new source on those. The pink kush is also a new one for us. Not a new strain, but a new origin uh, of these genetics. These aren't coming from any of my friends out here in BC. This actually came from a, a close friend and uh, fan and homie out of East Coast Canada, actually. All right, what's up, Gerald Greenthumb? Good to see you. I'm doing well. How you doing? What's up, Juice in the house? How you doing, baby? What's up? I'm doing well. What's up, Vic Victor? Good to see you, buddy. All right. Hell yeah, Adam Hans, a little blueberry OG. Well, we're going to be doing some blueberry indicas uh, of their own accord, plus a blue cheese Afghani cross coming up soon for you. So that's going to be a lot of fun. 
What's up, Gordy's Fish? How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. What's up, Jay Stanfield? It has been a while, baby. What's good in the hood with you? Uh -huh. All right. What's happening, Keith in Chief? Welcome to the show. What's high as fuck happy hour, everyone? Just take a moment here. I just want to give a shout out to uh, high as fuck happy hour. Uh, my close friends over in Alberta, I had the pleasure of first meeting them uh, when I was down in Saskatoon for the medicinal harvest Saskatoon cannabis cop. Uh, I got I got to meet Gerd Hayes and I got to meet Dab Jesus. Uh, check out their show. I believe they do it on Facebook. They may be doing it on the YouTube eventually now. And I know I'm eventually going to go and uh, join their show maybe uh, from my new studio once it's all set up. And I'm going to be doing some voiceover for them for their introduction and it's going to be fun. But uh, check out their show. Good dudes. And fuck man, they smoke a lot of weed on this show. So if you want to watch some people get high as fuck, I mean check out the high as fuck happy hour. Okay? The name does not lie. <laughs> hey! What's up, Alex Squatch? Good to see you, my friend. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I won't be doing out, uh, any of those plants uh, outdoors. We're doing that all indoors, but, uh, you know, keeping it real. What's happening, Ganja? Now, your mama, welcome to the show, you sexy lady. What's happening, unknown? What's happening? All right. What's up, Soul Price? Good to see you, buddy. I know. That's one thing we'll cover over is, is YouTube seems to be, you know, always keeping their heart on for Grow Channel. So if you like this channel, if you like our content, you like to be notified of all our videos and, and live streams, maybe once a week or every couple of weeks, check in to make sure your notifications button hasn't been turned off. YouTube does seem to be, in fact, turning off people's notifications a lot. Uh, so what are you going to do, right? What's up, Warren Bay Level? Good to see you, my friend. How's South Africa? Is it hot there right now? I don't know. Is it? It's hot here. Hot enough for me, anyway. Too hot. What's happening, Grimity? Good to see you. Uh -huh. All right. That's right. Uh, you, you know, keep in chief at the end of the day when you're a balding bearded idiot. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard. It was funny. I took my old dad to see ZZ Top one time. And we were sitting there down. And I hadn't had my beer growing up that much at the time, but my dad did. We're sitting there drinking at the bar before the show, and they're all like, damn, aren't you supposed to be on stage in a minute? Like, nah, that's just my old priest dad. All right. What's up, James Scanlon? Thank you for the love, my friend. Hey, much love back to you guys. High as fuck happy hour. I can't wait to come join you on the show sometime and uh, swear at the internet. What's up, Native Nugs Cannabis Cultivation? Good to see you, my friend. Right? I mean, YouTube seems to turn it off all the time on you. It's like, damn, why are you turning off my notifications, asshole? But what are you going to do? Yeah, no. So anyway, long story short, everybody, getting really excited about the new lab. Uh, I actually believe I have found the company whose mobile light rails we're going to be using for the show. Uh, so basically, uh, we're, we've, we've, uh, their website was like lightrail3.com. And so I was just doing a bunch of searching. Um, you know, I don't know if it's the exact same company. I don't think it is that, uh, that, uh, country at heart Finley was using, but I tried to contact that company and their website's pretty sketchy and they never got back to me. So I found another company out of Colorado, Gualala Robotics and Gualala had their executive, uh, vice president get right back to me. So we were talking yesterday. She was a very nice lady named Nancy. And uh, we've been emailing back and forth today. Uh, I'm just picking out which exact tech I want to use because one of the things is that makes our lights a little different than most companies' lights is we build our big lights into two fixtures. Uh, so most light system rails aren't designed for a light built that way. So, you know, I'm going to have to retrofit. They got a few things that might work for that. So we're looking into that. But mobile lights are going to be happening at the new show or the new lab. What's up, Josh Green? Good to see you, my friend. Hell yeah. Hey, thank you very much, man. You know, Charles Hankins, I can't wait to get back to growing. I'm not going to lie to you, everybody. It's been killing Uncle Pasquatch, not having any plans going. Uh, it's nice to be two weeks out from having the new house and the new lab going and getting to kind of get my juices flowing again as a grower. Uh, we're planting seedlings today. Uh, the new genetics that we're starting from seed is, uh, like I said, for those just tuning in, we got the pink kush from a new source coming out. 
blueberry indica rocking out. We got a blue cheese Afghani cross rocking out, which will be an interesting genetic component to see how it is. We've dusted off an old old genetic from the history of British Columbia, Canada called BC Big Bud. Man, BC Big Bud lives up to the name. You should see the titties this girl gets. I mean, it's big. It's a big plant, super producing plant from back in the day. Uh, very different than a lot of these new age genetics that everyone's obsessed with THC levels and then the fucking the actual yield goes to crap because nobody gives a shit and everything fox tails now. So that'll be fun to show everybody. So we're going to be doing that BC Big Bud. That's going to be sexy. And then what else did I say? We got a Bruce Banner, one of the three Bruce Banners we have on site. We got at least one of those popping. Uh, so it's going to be fun though. I'm looking forward to all these new genetics and playing with those. Um... All right, Chris McGarry wants to talk about autos. Well, I can talk about autos. I'm not a fan of autos, but we can definitely talk about them. Uh, let's see here. You say, I have seeds and I want to pop them, but I have no idea about them except 18.6 and to leave them alone. Uh, any fit info would be awesome. Well, basically, an autoflowering cannabis, okay? Let's talk about that for a second. It's no real different in one sense than a normal cannabis plant. However, its veg window and flowering window aren't defined by... Uh, a change in photo period okay so they're gonna they're gonna flower when they're ready right so if you plant your auto plant your autos in your finishing pots okay you're not going to transplant do a bunch of transplants on an auto you want to start them in your finishing pots uh because they're going to start to map out with that tap root the available area and that's going to play a variable in terms of when they go into flower okay um and at the end of the day too um you're not going to have a classic kind of exact time window to watch in terms of your flowering so for auto flowers keeping your eye on your trike development and trek coloration is going to be quintessential to kind of nailing down that harvest time uh don't train them too much i mean you can do a bit of training especially with some of the newer autos that are out there you can train them out you can do some big shit with them now don't top too much or get too aggressive on it low stress training okay high stress maybe stay away okay um but at the end of the day a lot of these newer autos that are out there now can handle a bit of low stress so it should be good you know what i'm saying Oh, keep it cheap. You know, I don't mind. I mean, back in the hood days when I was an HPS grower, man, we always used those light rails, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's a great way to cut down on power consumption while maximizing output. Um, and then if you combine how balanced our power numbers on our lighting systems from our company are, combine that with mobility, oh man, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to some Star Trek growing, you know what I'm saying? What's happening, Red Claw? It's good to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Excuse me. What's up, Chris Barton? Good evening to you as well, my friend. All right. For those of you who are seeing that link that Ganja Nani, your mama, is sharing there, that's where you're going to find your way into the Facebook group. We have a Facebook group community. The important thing about the Facebook community, okay, is answer those questions when you're applying. Because if you don't answer them, it is a liability. I'm going to have to deny you entry. And then I'm going to have to message you and be like, please answer the questions. So answer the questions, then anyone's welcome in the Facebook group. There's some basic rules. You got to agree to them. Got to treat people with respect. No egos, no prick waving, no fucking condescension, no shitting on people. And if you can get along with that, then we all good, okay? Uh -huh, Ray. Right? I agree, Native Nugs Cannabis Cultivation. Dude, fuck yeah, Gordy's Fish. What did you win, my friend? Sounds good, Soul Price. Sounds good, buddy. Well, that's the thing, Clay S. Yes. You know, you bring up a really good point. You know, um, a lot of people don't think this way that are newer growers, especially um, when it comes to our indoor grows. OK, we got to be very, very careful about where we bring things in from. OK, if you're getting clones from an outside source, even if it's a trusted friend and grower, you always put those clones. OK, under quarantine. OK, why do we do that? Well, if you don't, you could fuck the rest of your shit that you know is safe. We got to be really careful about what we bring into our growth. That's why the soil pasteurization video that I released yesterday for everybody, uh, that's a very important video, okay? Especially when it comes to planting babies and shit. We got to be careful, okay? We got to be so careful when it comes to indoor cultivation because we do not want to accidentally, you know, fuck ourselves and shoot ourselves in the foot, okay? So always be careful with what you're bringing into your grow. Hell, pests can even ride in on your clothing. So you got to be real careful with that, okay? So... I say good call. If your buddy gave you some plants with some spider mites and you don't want to deal with them, well, go take them back home. That's right, Greens of 373 Steel. Enjoy that brewski, my friend. Welcome home. Oh, 
Oh, what's up, Jakob? Which is Jacob Yokobalski. How you doing, buddy? I mean, you can native nugs. I mean, the thing to remember, though, you're going to lose some of the, the fucking uh, elements to that long-run sativa of the parent lineage when you turn it to an auto. Autos never live up to what their photo parents can do. Uh, so if that's okay with you, then I say go for it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if you're a sat lover, part of loving sats is being patient enough to run the window and take the time they require to truly become what they're meant to be. Who can hear my dogs howling inside? It's fucking funny. <laughs> fucking all 10 pounds of them. Oh, all right. And that's combined. <laughs> uh, all right. One second here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry about it. Just reading. Uh, where do you get good freaking seeds? Do you mean seeds in general? Or are you looking for a specific, like, freak show strain or freak of nature strain or something like that? How's work going for you, Red Cloud? What's up, Typhoid? How you doing? Yo, yo, yo to you, my friend. Uh, am I familiar with Harley Grower Clay? I am not. To be fair, I don't watch a lot of YouTube, to be honest with you. I'm far too busy of a man, sadly, to get to watch a lot of stuff on YouTube. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when I am watching YouTube videos, let's be honest, Uncle Podsquatch is usually high watching alien or ghost videos. It's kind of my jam. <laughs> One second. Uh, no, Ganjanani or Bama, that is the old link. You can type in the new link yourself at home. Uh, the new link for our CBD line, we fired those people and we're doing it all ourselves now. Uh, so it's potsquatchsales.com. So that's P-O-T-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H-S-A-L-E-S.com. Potsquatchsales.com. And that's where you're going to find our CBD line. However, we do have some good news. It's looking like, I mean, it's not a done deal, so nobody celebrate yet. But there's a very good chance in the next month or so, maybe two, you're going to be seeing Uncle Potsquatch's uh, CBD line in Walmart, in Target, and hopefully CVS as well. Uh, we may just start on their online platforms, but we basically signed those contracts almost now. So I'm just finishing up a few things, and we're hoping we can get that deal done like dinner. Because if we can get that deal done like dinner, it's going to really help us to generate the required capital to start a legal genetics company here in Canada, buy a farm, do a bunch of shit. So anyway, keep your eyes and ears open for that, and I'll let you know when that's happening. Well, I mean, Vic Victory depends on what drug test they're taking, uh, and also, too, it depends on where you are. I mean, I would assume that in certain places where CBD is not legal, because there are places in the States and all over the world where CBD isn't legal. So if they're testing for that cannabinoid, then yeah, you're going to fail. But if you're in a place where CBD is legal and they're not testing for that, then you'll be fine. Uh, how could someone that is taking a CBD product fail not for CBD, but for THC. Well, a lot of CBD products out there aren't actually straight up CBD. A lot of them do not meet the actual legal requirements to be considered just a CBD product, okay? A lot of people out there are pushing shit that's got THC in it. Uh, part of the concept of a CBD, okay, properly made is, is made in a high-end facility utilizing equipment that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars where we basically, what we do is we utilize the acidic nature of the cannabinoids so we can actually guarantee that there is zero THC in it. A lot of people aren't doing that. That's part of why we got into the CBD game because people, people out there in the States, in Canada, in the world, deserve a reliable, trustworthy CBD product that ain't got THC in it. They're not gonna go accidentally failing a drug test and it's been made in an FDA approved facility. Hi, that's what we're doing, okay? So our broad spectrum CBD product does not have THC. Absolute zero THC in it. Why? Because we have made it with the proper equipment to make sure that guarantee is there. So be careful about the CBD products you buy. At the end of the day, let's be fair. You want something you can trust? Just buy my shit. Because you know it's going to be legit. But that would be my two cents on why that's happening, Vic Victor. And I hope that helps, buddy. <laughs> tell Chris, uh, Chris McGarry, tell your dogs, I'm sorry, my dog's just getting excited. Anytime anyone walks by our property, they flip out. <laughs> hey, 
Well, yeah, and that blueberry set's interesting. I mean, I'm a blueberry indica kind of guy, so that's kind of my happy place personally. But uh, yeah, man, patience is a virtue when it comes to uh, growing sativas, and if you want to do it properly. What's up, Aaron Smith? Welcome to the show, my friend. One of my oldest best friends in the whole world, everybody. Aaron Smith, the big A. That's one of my homies from high school. <laughs> Red Claus is like, just another day on the res, man. People coming and going. Hey, man, I'm sitting on the res right now, too. Uh, man. But I, I, I'm i sitting in the part where they stick us uh, honkies. <laughs> Greetings to 373 Steel says, I just harvested two Bubba Kush in one Northern Nights. Hell yeah. Can't wait for them to be cured. Now, are you doing a dry trim on that or are you wet trimming that? I'm a big believer in dry trimming and then curing. What did I think of the show, The 100? I watched the first season or two. It was okay. Um, it was shot here in BC. Mrs. Potsquatch has actually been on that show a bunch of times, too. Uh, not in, like, a big role. She just did a lot of background years ago on the show. Uh, I've auditioned myself, actually, to be on that show a couple times. They didn't pick me, though. Uh, it lost my interest by season two. I might give it a chance again. Uh, but, uh, you know, the 100, yeah, it was okay. It was a local show. It was shot not far from where I live. Uh, but, you know, eh, they lost my interest by season two. Uh, they may get it back. I may check it out again. But, you know. Well, I'll have to check them out. Or if anyone talks to him, tell him, send me an email. I prefer just chatting with people anyway. Like I said, don't got a lot of time to be looking at fucking YouTube. <laughs> Especially right now. Between packing and moving and getting our lines uh, ready to go into the big stores. And then designing the new lab, talking to companies, as well as doing all the stuff that we're we'll be doing. You know what I'm saying? Plus ordering new equipment and doing this. Making plans for the new content. And trying to learn how to use a computer properly. Uh, I'm quite busy at the moment. But... <laughs> Always got time to talk on the phone. Uh, yes, so Josh Green, you're referencing the requirements for something to be considered hemp. A lot of people think hemp is its own thing. No, it's another strain of cannabis. It just has next to no THC in it. So there's legal levels required that you have to have below X amount for it to be a true hemp product. One second here, everybody. I'm just playing catch up. Uh, are you asking uh, in terms of our CBD products? I have talked to my business partners about us opening up things to uh, other countries that it's legal. And so my business partners have said yes. Uh, we don't currently have our website set up to do that, but there are ways to do it. And we will. That's one of the many things on my sundry item list. Uh, I currently right now, I'm working really hard to bring it up to open it up for the whole world in terms of our CBD line. And then eventually I'd love to be able to bring our stuff into Canada. Sadly, at first, probably the only thing I'm going to be able to bring into Canada to get into the stores here will be our beautiful, wonderful beard oil that will be coming to market in the next couple of weeks. I definitely think it could be Gordy's Fish. Hell yeah, Green's making me proud. Crop King seeds suck in my humble two cents, but that's just my thing. Uh, Big Victor, do I accept PayPal? Uh, do you mean for our CBD line? I'd have to double check our CBD line's website. Luckily, that's being handled by our, our partners, which is a good thing. Because at the end of the day, uh, PayPal keeps seizing my accounts wrongfully. I've lost $1,800 between two accounts they've seized over the last year and a half. God damn it. What's happening, Dr. Potness? Good to see you, buddy. Welcome to the show. Hell yeah, Typhoid. I'd love to get my hands on some, like, Mexican land race genetics, you know what I'm saying? Dude, well, the, the proofs you sent of the knives, uh, greens and 373 steel in terms of the initial blades are looking gorgeous. I can't wait to hold those things and go out into the bush and be stupid with them. Hell yeah. What's up, LJB? Welcome to the show, buddy. Uh, have your seed showed up that you had ordered yet?
Yeah, so uh, Green's 373 Steel, Big A's seen some of the stuff you've been working on for me there. And and because, uh, you know, he and I chat pretty much every day, at least one to three times. So, <laughs> um, actually, one day, everybody, you know, in a couple of years down the road, once, you know, the company's growing and we got lots of money in the company, one of the things I've always wanted to start <clears throat> is my own bar. As if we all know, Uncle Potsquatch is a fan of bars and beer. And so we're going to be starting a bar called Pot Squatch's Bar. I know it's a very complicated name. But uh, one day we're going to steal Big A, who's a Red Seal chef, down in uh, Prince Edward Island now. I'm going to steal him away and get him back up into British Columbia to run my bar. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a good time. Well, Green's 373 Steel, they're looking gorgeous. What's up, Wake and Bake Now? How you doing, my buddy Fred? And again, Fred, do not worry. I have not forgotten you. All packages will go out roughly around the time of my move. Uh, no, Jay Stanfield, we are setting up and getting there. Uh, but we are making the decision that pretty much no one else has done is to go fully legal. So we are in development right now, developing a shit ton of different genetics for everybody. Uh, right now, our main, our main focus is developing a shitload of F1s. Uh, and collecting as much differentiated seed that we can to work with because we only have a one-time allowance under Canadian law for what they call a legal seed. So I basically, when I go legal, when I can afford to go legal, uh, I have to have all the seed for the rest of my career to work with. So that's why anyone at home who's got some weird old shit stuck away in a corner or anything you'd like to put into the genetic seed bank for us to work with, we are happily taking donations. <laughs> What's up, Dr. Potness? Uh, oh, you're talking to someone else. Good. It's all good. Julio from Denver says, sorry I'm late. It's all good, Julio. Welcome to the show, baby. Uh, well, you know, Native Nugs, cannabis cultivation, I mean, I could do. I, my, my, my preferred thing would be uh, to find a company that wants to co-brand. Uh, you know, given that we have very limited capital right now as a company, uh, partnerships and the companies we work with is the is one of the biggest things helping us to get things done. Uh, so hell, man, hey Budweiser, you want to make a Bud Bud? Let me know. <laughs> ah. All right. Uh, Vic Victor, yes. Uh, if you go to potsquatchsales.com. You can buy our tincture that's currently on market. Uh, we have three new products also joining the line that will be out in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping. Uh, we've got CBD gummies coming out. We've also got uh, gel tabs, MCT oil gel tabs, but we currently on market have our 1,000 milligram uh, MCT tincture. And that also, all of these products and more to come. We're going to be releasing a lot more products in our CBD line in months to come as well. All are going to be hopefully available soon at Walmart and Target. And really, what I'm really trying to do is get CBS on board. You know what I'm saying? They got like 8,000 stores almost in America. So, Okay, so Julio, for Denver, if your buds are weighing down, you got to tie those ladies up. You got to put a brassiere on them. You got to tie the weed titties up, man. Hey man, Happy Dude Grows. That sounds brilliant. I mean, they're they're very uh, both. Uh, what's the Blue Sherbert? I've only ever tried it. I've never grown it. Uh, I definitely love to check it out, and I'm all about adding anything really into our genetic stores, even if it's a newer thing. You know, uh, I love old school shit, but it's like you know, there's a lot of other stuff. Hey, much love back to you, Jersey-born Roman Genetics. And, you know, I believe your state will get there. I think the, the whole world eventually is going to open up to pot. Will it be five years? Will it be 20 years? We will see. But that's why we fight. That's what the Pot Squatch Growers Army is here for. Not just the people in legal places, but for the rights and the activism for pot lovers around the world. What's up, Romains? What's up, Rick? What's up, Ganjanani, old mama? Well, exactly, Jersey born. I mean, at the end of the day, like, even in places like Canada where we have legalization, okay? Um, simply put, 
we didn't really get true legalization in Canada. What basically was done is what I affectionately call Prohibition 2.0. It was put in, in as a control system. It's actually oddly more illegal now under legalization than it was even before. A uh, big part of that was done so that the big companies, the government could come in and take over shit and, and do what they wanted to do. Uh, but then, you know, they shit the bed for the last two plus years and have lost a lot of money. So slowly we're seeing the legal realities of Canada start to open up a little bit and kind of change a little bit. Uh, so that in and of itself is exciting news. In British Columbia, where we live now, one of the things we're trying to get legal as fast as we can uh, for that, when we can afford it, will be because in 2022, uh, there is a legislature coming out of the BCNDP called Farmgate or uh, farm to table legislature. What does that mean? Well, all craft growers and all micro nursery license, all these micro craft licenses, the little people, the true growers of BC who got priced out originally uh, from the game because it's all an inflated cost. I mean, it's very expensive to do anything legally here in Canada. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big, that's a big fucking part of why we have launched in the states our CBD stuff because it's just easier to do business there right now and my country's made it quite hard for the little people. But we'll get there. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, oh shit, I'm distracting myself from my brain. Come on brain, spark again. Oh right, farm to table legislature. There we go, I just got back to it. All oh, right, so basically what it's gonna allow the small people to be able to do, so that's why we're working really hard to get there, is we're actually gonna be able to set up our own small little dispensary at our facility. It'll be kind of like a craft brewery in a sense. And you go to the tap room, it's like, hey, welcome, would you like to try our new tap bullshit this? You know, like, come on in, we can do that and have a dispensary. But then we can also sell farm fresh farm to table cannabis there but we can do the same thing to government retailers so now it doesn't have to be irradiated we don't have to spread or spray shit down with poison you know it's going to be a lot more open because it's a fucking plant man it's like you know farmers should be able to go to the market and sell the shit right it's a basic pro you know concept a lot of parts of the world the local farmer will come down the street like let's say he's a squash farmer when he got some squashes he's gonna be like hey who wants to buy some squash you know you got some peppers like who wants to buy some peppers you know who wants to buy some weed titties? I mean, it should be the same goddamn thing, right? So at the end of the day, um, so that's really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And that's why we're working really hard to try to get there just so we can actually uh, try to do something local for people. <laughs> Well, see, and that's the thing where you can bake, uh, Fred, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, brother, is like, I, we don't have to do legalization that way. Like, there's ways for legalization to actually properly work. And I mean, I think the government is starting to wake up, and I think big business also starting to realize, like, fuck, man, maybe we should back off and let some of these people who know what they're doing into the industry, too, because it's failing right now. Um, it's astonishing if you look at uh, reports of the losses of some of the large companies globally right now. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. I mean, decriminalization worked really well. Um, but at the end of the day, let's be honest, for a true fair global market, for us to really be able to be farmers and genetic developers and doing all these wonderful things in terms of the cannabis industry, we do really need to have some form of proper smart working legalization. We do need to have some forms of regulation. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to keep people safe. We got to have a, a safe, fair, inclusive market, right? Like, there's ways forward for this all to work. None of us in the industry, well, some of us in the industry didn't want legalization, let's be honest. But, you know, a lot of us <laughs> were like, man, like, we're not against this. Let us pay taxes. But there's ways for it to work. You know what I'm saying? So, we'll get there. We'll get there, my friends. But that's what we're working for and fighting for. Now let's talk about some of the new exciting things coming up in the new world for the new show. I mean, obviously, one, we're going to be doing a really new formal fancy. Uh, oh, this is just a dart right now. When I'm thinking, it helps me thinking stuff. I mean, I was smoking a sort of a mix of a bunch of different buds that I found on my counter, Rick. And I rolled a joint before the show. I'm like, well, I don't know what any of you are right now. I have a rough gift, but I'm going to smoke you and just roll you together. Here, be friends. <laughs> but um, at the new lab setup, one of the things I'm really, 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 really excited about is this new show. 
Uh, so for our live streams, they're still going to be the same thing like this. You know, we're still going to be all chatting. We're going to be talking to each other. You know, we're going to be having fun, answering questions, interactive. But I'm learning how to use Streamlabs. We're going to have multiple cameras, and we're going to be able to kind of like shoot one way into the thing. We're going to be able to shoot, you know, have a wide angle, have an uptight angle. I'll be able to share videos. Like if you send an email in, right, I'll be like, all right, there's a fucking email here. Such and such would like to ask this question. Here is the picture, and then I can make it pop up live stream and like kind of, I guess, mix the show if that makes sense i think that's the best way to talk about it as we go in the show very excited about that we're gonna be able to like bring people into the show and do like video uh kind of like interviews and stuff i'm thinking about adding a little bit of structure to certain parts of the live stream so maybe we'll start with kind of like a formalized thing of like this week in cannabis we read this article and we looked into it and well as far as we could tell it might actually be legitimate uh you know fun things like that um and then also to just sort of, you know, always having our, you know, answering the questions and, and hanging out with people and just sharing and caring and having a good time, you know. And I'm looking forward to that. Plus, we're really going to get back to a lot of, I need another beer. Let's go get a beer, everybody, while I talk. All right. So we're going to be working really hard, too, to get back to the how-to videos, the educational videos, the, the exploratory videos, the experimentation videos. I'm looking at this lab, too, as a heaven-sent uh, little thing here where I can also kind of get back to one of the first things I fell in love with when it came to growing, which was learning new things, trying new things, fucking around with shit. Um, you know, uh, one of the videos that's really grown on my mind recently uh, in terms of something that'll be really fun to do on the new show, uh, or not the show itself, but like in the new videos for the content, right? Uh, we'll be doing like that compare and contrast with all the different nutrient-based systems, right? Like round one, ding, ding, will be Green Planet, Advanced Nutrients, and Remo. And that's kind of, I think that's going to be fun, right? Like, it's going to be a cool thing to see. What's up, Roman? Good to see you, buddy. And so that's going to be a fun, fun thing, I think. Um, I'm really looking forward to, like, we're going to build a space bucket. At first, I was going to build an initial space bucket. And then I was like, and then we'll follow it up by building a space tin. Part of me is thinking, like, fuck the space bucket. Let's do a space tin. But maybe people really just want to see that five-gallon space bucket style. So I guess we could do that first. <laughs> but we will see. <laughs> but just doing fun things like that, fabricating things. Like one of the sort of the sets of videos at the beginning of the start there is like you're going to see everything that we're doing as we design the new lab and build the new lab. You know what I'm saying? Um, like we're going to build some tables. I'm going to make a video where I pull out a table saw and you're going to see me play around with wood. That sounds dirty. <laughs> We're going to make some tables. We're going to, you know, share everything that we do uh, uh, in terms of that, right? Where, you know, the install of the light rail systems, you're going to get to see that in the video. And if I end up getting mad at certain parts of the install and swearing at something, I'll let you see that too. <laughs> We're going to keep it all open. It's going to be like a fun exploratory piece. Building the new lab, baby. You know, uh, but I'm looking forward to all of it. I mean, really... You know, we're just kind of jumping both feet into the being being what we are and, and doing the pot splash thing now. It's like, yeah, I'm still an actor, writer, comedian. I still shoot uh, stuff sometimes. And I, you know, so there'll be times occasionally where like maybe I'll just like pre-record a bunch of content, program it to all release over the week while I have to go be on set and shoot a movie or a TV show or something. These things do occasionally happen. Not as often as I would like. So I don't think you need to really freak out. It's not like I book all the time. <laughs> but... You know, we're going to live, eat, and breathe all this shit now. And also, too, that brings me to my point of we have another email now, okay? Potsquatchdo at gmail.com. So if there's a specific type of video, an ex uh, uh, a specific educational video, uh, a specific experiment, a specific, what's up, mass hole grower? What's happening? Uh, or experiment or compare and contrast, I don't give a shit. You come up with an idea that's related to the content of what we do and you want to see it, send it in. I'm not gonna necessarily be able to get to everyone's ideas right away, but I will endeavor to do all the ones that I physically can eventually. You know. Yeah. Thank you, Ganjanani, your mama, you're wonderful. Hey, Big A, are you there? Do you have the links, Big A? You probably don't. I should send you that. Oops. Hey, much love, Juice52389, my friend. Thanks for hanging out, and thanks for tuning in. 
Have a beautiful day. Oh, I feel you, Wake and Bake. You know, hey, Wake and Bake, you just triggered a fun story time. I remember when I left my first marriage, everybody. So I didn't do a lot of growing when I was over in Germany when I was living there. I grew a little bit near the end because I was just like so done with everything. I was like, I'm going to grow some plants. And I quietly did it in Germany. It was dangerous <laughs> at the time. <laughs> but when I came back to Canada, Uncle Potsquatch first came back. He found, somehow I found myself a little bachelor apartment in Vancouver when I was leaving that marriage and coming back to, to reclaim my life as a grower in Canada and being a weed person. <laughs> it was 145 square feet. That's right. I moved into a 145 square foot bachelor apartment. It was tinier than shit, but I actually loved it. It was right in the heart of, of Kitsilano. It was in an old century home. Uh, and uh, that's where a place like, you know, I, I could probably maybe accommodate a space bucket. And that's it. Um, and so simply put, <laughs> that's where the space bucket would have fucking worked. Because I had 145 square feet. And uh, me and the cat lived in there. And luckily I moved out fairly soon thereafter and then had enough space to start dicking around with plants again. But <laughs> I know what it's like to be trapped in a small place. Uh, that's why I'm truly excited again about uh, lab number two. Lab number two is going to be this playground, I guess you could say, of just all these new different ideas and things to play around with, right? Like there's over 900 square feet. So I've dedicated the bedroom of this apartment what we're going to use that for is going to be a perpetual flowering kind of area room. And then we're going to start doing all these other things in, in terms of the uh, uh, areas with different experiments and different things to play around with and shit. I'm looking forward to it, 100%. R&D room. Yeah, right? Exactly, Keith and Chief. Research and development, or at least what I call professional tomfuckery. <laughs> like, um, one of the fun things, too, uh, that I'm really looking forward to doing on the new channel is, like, this new house, uh, the new lab, right? It's, it's an older house, so it was built in 1967, everybody. The summer of love, okay? And it's got a lot of these weird closets and, like, tucked away little midget spaces. So I'm going to do some experiments, like, back when I was a teenager, growing in, like, random closets and growing in tiny, cramped areas. And we're going to, like, show those at home kind of a small, tiny version of playing around and getting pot squatch on, right? Plus, for me, it's kind of fun. It's like it's been so long since I've done anything in a closet. The one time recently I did was at the beginning of this channel. So playing in these tight, cramped spaces will be, uh, it'll be something I quite enjoy, I do believe. So, fuck it. I'm looking forward to it, everybody. It's going to be a good time. You know, it's funny, Wake and Bake. I had a lot of buddies like that back in the day, right? Like, I mean... Uh, they just lived with their crops and that was a kind of underground beauty uh, thing for them, right? And like, yeah, they had basically a mattress and a computer or a TV and a fridge and that was it. Like the rest was just plants everywhere. Uh, there was a great pot movie back in the day. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Aaron, if you're there, double check this, uh, uh, double check this uh, name of this movie. It was called Growing Up, I think. It's like about this weed growing family and it's hilarious because you go into their house and there's just weed everywhere. Like, it's just very comical. So if you want to watch a fun uh, stoner movie, great one. Probably my great favorite stoner movie of all time is called Saving Grace. It's about an old British lady and her Scottish uh, groundskeeper. And her husband dies and leaves her a shitload of debt. So she starts growing dark. It's, it's a good movie. It's brilliant. Check it out. Saving Grace. Homegrown. Chris McGarry. Uh, I can't remember if Billy Bob was in it, to be fair, because my brain's a little spotty in terms... I haven't watched the movie in years. It may have been that, but I can't remember. Ah, shoot. If I had my other little phone or a computer here, I could check it. See, at the new show, I'll be able to check these things, too, during the show. Ah, okay, ganja on your mama. It's all good, yo. You should message me your email so I can send you just, like, link uh, lists in an email. Then you can just... 
share them. You know what I'm saying? What's up, buds, and how was our... Uh, um, oh, some of the new content that's... What's up, Tab, buds? Uh, so one of the, the new types of content we're going to be doing, too, is uh, Brett, our, our partner in crime when it comes to in terms of our, our lighting systems, okay? I proposed to Brett. I was like, dude, I want to do a, a weekly show with... Or no, monthly show. One show a month. And if you can fit it in, I want to do a show a month about lights. And, and you come in and talk about lights, and we can talk about anything, really. But I want to bring you in. I want to give you know you a bit of a face in terms of our brand and everything. And so he's actually agreed to that. So And he is smarter than I am when it comes to questions about the actual tech side of things a bit when it comes to lights. I mean, I know enough to answer most basic questions, right? But you can actually ask Brett your own questions about that. It's going to be... So it is homegrown. Is it the one, though, Chris McGarry, like at the end, his parents go to jail, he stays out of jail, he's got the sister who's like the pot dealer, and then he's like in college, and he's like growing dope and slanging dope in terms of the thing, and his roommate's like his little bookkeeper secretary, and he has that weird looking trained plant growing in like a filing cabinet or something. Because if that's how the movie ends, then that's the movie I'm thinking of. It would definitely be a, a stinky dream, Roman Reckless. I don't know if he was in it. I don't remember Billy Bob Thornton being in this movie, but I remember the movie I'm thinking about. I thought it was called Growing Up. Like, growing, uh, something like that. Big A's seen this fucking movie. I wish he was here watching and he could help me answer this. Chris may be right. I just can't remember, man. It's been a, it's been years since I watched that movie. But an even better weed movie is Saving Grace about an old British lady growing dope. Watch it. It's like my favorite weed movie of all time. Probably one of the things that sets that film aside uh, from most other stoner uh, movies is the fact that it feels like a real movie. Like it's not just silly dumb humor, right? Like it's not like just like this silly goofy kind of thing, right? Where most pop movies are silly and goofy. It is legit a beautiful ama amazing movie. Like it's so good. Right? You've seen it. Have you seen it? Native Nugs Cannabis Cultivation Saving Grace is a great fucking movie. And it's uh, I don't want to ruin it for anyone so I'm not going to talk about it too much but if you want a, a movie that's worth watching and it's about growing weed and an old lady growing weed, trust me, it's funny. Ooh, and some of the fun things that we're going to be doing too, we're actually going to be making a video. So I found out when I was looking at this house, I was trying to find a house that was on the natural gas system of like an area, right? So it had natural gas to the house. This house has natural gas to it. So... Uh, what we're going to be doing is we are going to take that natural gas system and we're going to call Generac and we're going to get them to come in and I'm hoping they're going to let me do a movie or not a movie like a little video with them I'd love to talk the guy who probably installs it'll be down and we'll ask him questions he'll explain it but it's a backup power generation system that runs off the natural gas of the house and it's going to automatically click in it's going to protect the laboratory and the rest of the house obviously but like the laboratory okay uh <laughs> that's the main reason for that shit like but so we're going to be backing up lab two with a generac backup generator automatic turning on fancy pants shit it's going to be pretty cool pretty excited and it runs off natural gas Now, how do you take your RSO stone gamer? Are you doing it through a sublingual tincture? Are you just eating it or what? <laughs> Excuse me. Tolerance can definitely be real. It's right, Greens? See, Generac, they're fucking cool. I'm not going to lie to you. I saw it on TV for the last 10 years, and I've always wanted to get one. And this is the first time where I'm like, ha-ha. I'm just gonna get one now, and we're gonna install it into the house, and we're gonna talk about backup power generation. It was funny, a lot of my buddies were like, oh man, and will you sell me your other generator? And I was like, no, because I still need a mobile generator. What if I'm shooting something? We got commercials to shoot for our products coming up once we can afford to shoot them, so it's like, I'm gonna keep my generator. 
can run a lot of lights off that fucker. Okay, interesting technique, Stone Gamer. I do also ingest a lot of RSO. I find it very beneficial just for my pain and my daily management. I like to take it though and I put it into olive oil and I just do it in my cook on it and I make a little tincture out of that. Just drop it under the tongue, it's great. Yeah, well Native Nugs, but I moved to this res and I moved out here where we first moved here and then um, it was a summertime, it was super hot and we had like six power outages in a week and I nearly lost my mind. Ask Mrs. Potsquatch, I was losing my shit. And I was just like, I called, I called everybody and I was like, no, fuck this. Like I didn't have a car that was big enough to go get a generator, but I was buying a generator. Could I afford a generator? Not really, but I didn't care. And so I went to Canadian Tire. I got a good deal. We bought a Champion 30, 30 uh, what was it? A Champion 6250 start 5500 watt running uh, generator. A lot of people are like, oh, well, Champions aren't the most efficient. You're damn right. Oh, they're loud. Yeah, yeah they are. But there's a reason why we use them. The things are nigh on indestructible. And with the basic little maintenance, the things will run forever, man. So it's a great generator for when you're in a pinch and it'll get you going. And so, yeah, it was funny. Like I called my buddy Marco. He's like the only person I kind of made friends with out here because I'd only been out here for a little while. And even though I was a bartender, like, you know, I'm their bartender. I'd only kind of made buddies with a couple of them, right? So I was like, man, I need to go pick up a generator. Will you help me go pick it up, man? Because I tried to pick it up in the Cadillac. It did not work. I could not get that cocksucker even out of the box into my trunk. So I realized very quickly that a Cadillac was not sufficient to transport this generator. So we had to call my friend. But backup power, everybody. It's a big deal. Especially if you're like running more than a plan or two. Uh, you know, people who are running little closet things, you can have a little eliminator battery pack. You could have, you know, basic power and a basic light. You can actually keep yourself safe for a small setup for very little power. But when the second you put a number of plants together and you get that kind of a setup, you know, you need a backup power system. It's quintessential to not having your world shit the bed. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be running the whole thing off the generator. That's very true, Rick. It's not a cheap habit to run things on backup power, but it's nice to know you have it. 100%. See, I would feel, I agree with you, Stone Gamer. I'm an Indica man as well. No, exactly, Native Nugs. You know, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just a true statement. Okay, man. Have fun with the plants, Rick. Tell them I say hi. Yeah, right? I love that fucking piece of champion, loud, maybe not the most efficient, fuel efficient piece of shit, but I love my champion. She's great. You can throw her around, kick her around. She keeps running. She's a, a beautiful generator. Yeah, there are some Indicas, though, or Indica Doms, really, that are out there that do possess some very fruity uh, flavors as well. So, you know, it's never locked away 100% on that. You know what I'm saying, Roman? Yeah, well, Chris McGarry, we got a lot of power outages, and the thing that started to piss me up, or piss me off here, was the fact is, is like, a big part of where our power outages was coming from were the drunk people driving into power poles. And I, uh, like... Motherfuckers, if you can't have a beer and drive your car or your truck, do not stop driving down power poles. We live on a singular line. It's one highway. There's one power line. And there's these kind of parts where it just seemed like drunk people will always take them out. I'm like, damn, what is BC Hydro spending on replacing this shit? Oh, it was very frustrating. Then that combined with the wind tunnel factor of where we live in the valley and like all the storms and shit, power outages became a real thing. Ratchet strap. I don't know, man. It was pretty heavy generator, man. You know, you know, saying native nugs, man. It was pretty heavy. Plus, I love my Cadillac too much to 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 run the risk of crumbling its roof like that. <laughs> That's why I bought my little Volvo off my buddy there. So I got that little SUV. And if I ever need to move anything real big, I'll just ask my wife to borrow her truck. <laughs> Uh, but I do love, I do love, I do love the idea, Native Doug. 
just put it on the Cadillac and strap it to the roof, man. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, greens, the 373 steel. It does eat gas. I, I put a fuel cleaner in mine every once in a while. Uh, and that does help to keep it going and keep her clean. Maybe occasionally breaking her down and cleaning it out. That'll help a bit too, right? But, um, and they're not the hardest things to take apart or put back together. So, yeah, just maintenance is important for the Jenny, though. What's up, Ozzy Big Buds? Ozzy Big Buds isn't actually from Australia, everyone. <laughs> Ozzy Big Buds is Canadian. I remember when I first actually talked to Ozzy Big Buds, I was I was pretty sure like he was Australian. So I'm like, oh man, what's up, your Aussie bastard? He's like, nah, I'm from Canada, bro. I was like, oh, what's up with the name then? Like, <laughs> actually, the only auto flowering cannabis I do believe in our seed collection came from Aussie Big Buds. You sent me those, right, Aussie? Because I only got like the one. Hell yeah, Devin Wall. Have a beer, have a smoke with me, buddy. No, I know. Is my snow all gone here? Uh, well, we never really had snow this year here in uh, this part of British Columbia much. Uh, no, it's 20 plus degrees here. It's hot. That's why I'm sitting outside. Stone Gamer has the faith in the Cadillac. Dude, you are lucky on that, Chris McGarry. I remember this one time. Um, I had just got off doing the, the show for All In with Rick Jordan, talking about big pharma and cannabis and corporate crap and talking about us and what we do and my views on stuff. So we went and shot that show, and I was, like, super stressed out about the show. I was like, fuck, man, like, they're, like, a real thing. Like, they're a huge show compared to us, and, like, this guy runs a very large company that's even on the verge of being publicly traded and shit. I was like, all right, like, hopefully I did not sound like an idiot. I feel like I either sounded brilliant or completely stupid. And uh, luckily it went all right. But it was like, I'm sitting there all stressed out a few minutes after the show, talking to Big A just like i don't know how it went bro and then like boom power went out it was actually the transformer at the front of the park here set on fire and burst into flames power went out though fucker like basically blew up <laughs> imagine being underneath that thing all of a sudden the fucker just blows up and sets on fire that sucked Oh, that's sad, Keith and Chief. Maybe find, like, a local group in your area and just say they're for free or for donation or something, bro. You never know. Really? You got snow today. That's crazy. No, it's, like, been hot here. The last week, last two, three days especially, it's it's, it's gone well over 20 degrees here. My grass is going crazy, but I don't want to cut it until like the day before we move because I'm trying to leave the dandelions because it's the food or first food source for the local honeybees and shit. I don't want to kill them and I don't want them to starve. <laughs> oh, I feel you, Stone Gamer. I mean, eventually one day we hopefully will build the, the newest lab that'll be built on the acreage that we acquire will be totally off grid power. Hopefully, hemp batteries are available by this point. No, I'm saying, but Keith and Chief, maybe someone locally. Just put it up for free, like uh, free with pickup or something for anyone who wants it, you know? One thing is, is since the new show is going to be coming from you uh, to you from a stage, we're not going to be able to smoke cigarettes like this in the show anymore. <laughs> we'll see how I adapt. I'm just going to smoke a lot of doobies and then I'll get too stoned to fucking answer. <laughs> no, I feel you. Roman Reckless, that's one of the biggest things for any grower. Power consumption. But... That's why rocking LED rigs and, and doing things to reduce power consumption is such a big deal. That's why we're switching on the main flying room. We're going to be showing light movers and show how to use those to basically double our output for the power consumption. 
Uh, am I moving to the USA? No, dear God, no. I'm I'm moving deeper into the mountains. I bought a house out out in Hope. <laughs> Nah, I'm probably just going to switch back because most of the years I smoked, I didn't even smoke cigarettes. I used to smoke a pipe for most of my life. So uh, pipe tobacco is nice and uh, it doesn't smell like shit. So as long as they don't have any open air stuff and do filtration, maybe I can set up some way for the stage to be, I can have at least a pipe of tobacco to show or something. <laughs> or worst case scenario, I'll just, uh, you know, get the wife to come down and talk to you for 10 minutes while I pop out for a dirt or two. Well, I feel you, right? Like, I mean, dude, like, right? Me too, Eugene Dolan. Like, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, you must burn through a lot of power. And it's like, with our setup that we had, right? Uh, how many double squatches were going? Let's let's do some thing here. So we had one, two, three, four, five. Then we eventually brought in the double racks and we were running both AC in the summer, for example, out for the main space of the house. We we're running AC in the setup. I was also running a dehumidifier. These all pull out serious amperage, these units. So that's some power consumption. I got two fridges always plugged in. Um, and so, yeah, but like, you know, like my power bills were big, but they weren't big, big. Like my friends that were running like pretty serious setups. So like my one buddy was running like a, like a 16 uh, or no, or was it a 32, 32 lamps plus his house, right? Like. You know, he was getting power bills where it's like four to seven grand, right? I knew other people that were getting power bills like 10 to 30 grand. I was like sitting there going like, doom. <laughs> well, exactly, Roman Reckless. Like that's when we get all the toys, they start to add up. But like, that's where like, Eliminating the power consumption where we can in our grows and, and keeping things highly efficient is such a beneficial thing, right? So like one, if I can then have the same space set up, but run it with half the amount of lights. And it's not like the motors that are the mobile motors are gonna be drawing tons of power at the wall to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, motor load will de determine how much they're drawing. Like they're not going to draw a shitload of power. So we're actually not maybe taking away, you know, 50%, but we'll take away 50% of the lighting power for the same amount of the coverage though. And then we're adding on a little bit of power consumption on the mobile motors, but it's not going to be huge though. Right? So like anytime we can actually eliminate, um, power consumption like that, like that's awesome. So, I mean, efficiency, that's one of the things I want to really start to explore with our setups and play with on the channel and, and educationally for everybody at home, too. Like, I'm looking forward to that, um, you know, because, you know, let's not fuck the planet if we can, you know, not fuck the planet. <laughs> yeah, I like our double racks, man. You know, they're, they're ninth, Roman. We're going to be bringing in a bunch of those. We're going to be running uh, three double racks uh, in the new lab. Um, We've got our new X2 strips that also has some deep red in it. We're gonna run uh, two of those. And then there's another one, it's like the X, X3 350, and it's got some far red shit in it too. Uh, we're gonna get one of those and run one of those for fun too. One second here, everybody, I'm playing catch up now. Hell yeah, motherfucker Jones. And then if you run your lights at night at the same time, with the reduced power of all these things, it's more power savings. <laughs> What's up, Scott? Good afternoon to you, my friend. Oh, exactly, Electro Illuminati. And then we're also going to have backup bioethyl generators uh, for our off-grid power eventually one day. I've been designing things like that in my head for a long time. See, that's the thing, Wake and Bake. Our lights do penetrate. That's partly why I grow my plants out so tall in the last number of runs. I wanted to show that our lights can actually penetrate, too. 
Um, and the way that the photons actually work off an LED, it's not force feeding photons like an HPS would to a plant. It's much more conducive to the cells of the plant actually ingesting light. Not to mention, um, we can get a little bit closer, so that's great. Uh, but we're not having the same power consumption either. There was another point. Oh, vastly ba more balanced par with LED, especially on like one of our racks now, especially like if you compare the, the, the par balance to that, to a traditional HID system, it's ridiculous. Last time we checked every week, titty important, not just the one right here. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the right LEDs waking big. That's a hundred percent true. Bioethyl alcohol electroluminati is just basically basically I'm gonna make moonshine out of all my leftovers and then run our generators off that. Waste not want not. Then you can use your mash cook down for making that for fertilizers and other crap. <laughs> I am resisting making so many dirty jokes right now, Native Nugs. <laughs> Uh, Stone Gamer says, I run two flower tents posed to each other to even out my usage. Oh, I see what you're saying. Hmm. Oh, Electro Illuminati, I agree. Off grid power is kind of where I want to get one day we'll get there working on it now let's get back to let's talk for a few minutes about some of the new stuff that people can expect to see on the channel um i'd like to also maybe start a show maybe we'll do one of these once a month at some point where pot squatches at home if they'd like to could come on the show so we could have a show where like everyone at home like you know we'll obviously pre-set it up and We'll do sort of some equipment check stuff and we can do that, but we can bring people on the show, you know, kind of a, a community day, if that makes sense. And we could, you know, in person answer questions you may have on the show uh, or just talk about your grows if you'd like to. I mean, I know some of you at home definitely don't want to do that and that's totally fine. But if there's any Posquatches out there that like to come on the show, I'd love to have you. It'd be a hell of a lot of fun. It just has to do with how uh, it's all set up there uh, for a fury. So if you're talking about a diode, right? The whole point of it is it's um, it's meant to admit down. And the way, that, like part of how that, and then with the heat sink, heat will be directed with the way the chip is working a little bit too, right? So that'd be my best guess as to why you're experiencing that kind of sensation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, Native Nugs. Like, I mean, if, if everyone would be into that, I mean, I'd love to do that. I think it'd be super fun. And I think it would be, because one of the things I like to do going forward too is help us to, to build our community, come together, you know, and, and like get to know each other even better, all of us, right? You know, we are the army. We are the pot squashes. And so I think that'd be a lot of fun, you know? Like if people want to come on the show, we could do that. I mean, obviously, you know, if we don't have anyone who wants to do it one month, then we wouldn't necessarily do it. But, uh, you know, that's one of the new ideas I've been toying around with. Um, I'm really excited about all the how-tos, though. We're going to start... I'm starting to build a list of things that I think would be beneficial and helpful for people at home. I also want to start doing some budget grow experiments. You know, maybe we'll do a, kind of a, a budget grow run. Where it's like... Hmm. Here we are. I've got... A hundred bucks, let's say, and anything we can buy or find, we got to do a grow or something like that, or 150 bucks or 50 bucks or, and just kind of play around with it that way. I think that could be a fun budget grow. Let's see what Pot Squatch does. <laughs> oh, totally. And I'd just like to, you know, I'd love to give some, uh, some other people some time in the spotlight too. And if they want to kind of come on, uh, come on in and doing their thing right no exactly well because native nugs in terms of the budget grow show kind of idea like i mean fuck man that was me as a kid right like cannibalizing lamps and parts and shit from everywhere and you know either uh either i pay for it or i find it you know <laughs> and then do what we can and having some fun with that i think that could be a lot of fun you know um 
Another thing that I'm really excited about is building this space tin or like the super micro grow. I think we'll start doing that maybe even more often. Like I'll just buy random things and then we'll build it into a growing unit for the fuck of it, right? Eventually I'm gonna have to start giving these things away or something like that because, well, <laughs> I don't have that much room. And uh, hey, Chivo King, there we go. I could definitely do, I could definitely do like, you know, uh, a little solo cup grow show. What's up, Mr. Manny D? How you doing, my friend? Rock and roll, good to see you, my friend. And uh, you know, like, so I'm just fun. I I'm having fun in my brain. Like I'm excited to do all these fun little experiments and get to experiment again. But the great thing is, is there's enough room at Lab 2 that we'll still have all the normal update videos on the Perpetual Grow going. It's just like, we got a whole lab much bigger than the space we've had now for me to just sort of fuck around and explore things. <laughs> and I've been working on my editing and trying to get better at the editing side of things. So, you know, it'll be a little bit easier for you to watch than before. <laughs> uh, Vic Victor says... Do you recommend using neem seed meal during veg and flower outdoors pond squash? Uh, I've never personally worked with neem seed meal. Um, so I would actually have to look it up in terms of what its basic breakdown is uh, before I could give you an honest answer. I, the one thing I could speak to outdoors is one, if you're, if you're talking about adding in a bunch of really hot stuff or pretty you know sexy additives, always go with a little less is more. Uh, don't hit them too hard, but also remember that it can adapt and bounce back. And also remember too, if you want to add some stuff, maybe even dig down. Like I, this is one thing I used to do when I would help some of my buddies outdoors, right? So we'd start it out in the middle, dig the hole, but then I'd go out and I'd actually dig down around it a bit into like this other trench. And then we put all this kind of richer uh, nutritional stuff there. So then as the roots are going out, it will find it later in its life when it's able to handle more feed and do its thing, right? Like, so there's lots of fun little things you can do, but in terms of neem meal, I mean, I'd have to look it up and read a bit about it before I could give you an honest answer about that one, man. And I'm sorry about that, but I'm just being honest. <laughs> I hope that helps. Cause I know I didn't answer your question. Fuck all really, but <laughs> Okay, good. So some of you have read about it. Good. So at least there's some shit. Because I just got my basic shit about doing shit outside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an indoor grower tries to answer outdoor questions. I am not an idiot. <laughs> hey, no worries, Ozzy Big Buzz. Welcome back, yo. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But, no, the new lab's going to be pretty fun, everybody. I'm pretty excited. We're going to also build a tent city for everybody. I, I believe in one of the shows, we were all joking around. We came up with, like, what can, what was, like, the basic required amount for a tent city. <laughs> hey, man, you know, and there's a lot of fun things out there, right? In terms of organic farming and other options that are there. <laughs> um, so that's kind of one of the exploratory pieces I'd like to do too on the channel. Uh, maybe we'll try some no-till. Maybe I'll make some super soils again. Uh, super soils are, uh, when properly executed, can be amazing. Uh, but they're a tricky bitch to get just right. It's like making a souffle. It ain't necessarily rocket science, but it's hard to get just right. <laughs> Yo, Jay Green, it's all good, baby. Welcome to the show, my friend. We got some time left, you know what I'm saying? We talked about a little bit of everything, but also talked about the new lab and sort of some exciting stuff that we're looking forward to doing, you know. Have any of you watching uh, seen the video that we released yesterday? Our little soil pasteurization video. We have fun making that one. We're actually making the, the seed spreading video too. Uh, shot some stuff for it today. I think that one will be out basically Monday, I think.
Is it a blueberry indica that you ordered, yo pot daddy? Oh, thanks, Electro. Okay, cool. So you can top dress. I mean, top dressing is always something that's fun. I mean, a lot of stuff I'll top dress. I've top dressed uh, with my coffee grounds. Sometimes I'll top dress with Epsom salts, uh, even eggshells. I mean, and so well, the great thing about top dressing and, and just kind of doing a top dress with these slow release things is just what I said. It's like a slow release. It'll slowly break down on the tops and just sort of give a little extra oomph. But remember, like a lot of your main root systems are down here. So it's going to have time to dissipate and come through. And it's just more conducive to the natural uh you know plant itself rather than nuking it or accidentally burning it or hurting it you know what i'm saying why did i do that to the soil though because uh my bag of hp has been out all winter there's tons of bugs and fungus gnats all alive fungus gnats are really bad where i live there was cuts in the bag so i had to pasteurize the soil from all uh pathogenic organisms so i didn't have to deal with fucking bullshit Fungus gnats, as everyone knows, are something that I have a history with on YouTube, and, and I very much dislike them. I really don't like fungus gnats. <laughs> well, you know, Native Nuts, I think it's a bit of both, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, in general, right? Like, it, it is very much an art, art form. It's very almost like a spiritual thing, too, growing. But there's also a lot of science too, right? It's, it's kind of three different languages and approaches to the same universe dancing together. <laughs> oh, thanks for the love, Green 373 Steel. It was nice to see that we could still release a how-to video and people would still check it out. It's been killing me not really doing what we do for months and, and uh, oh, it's heartbreaking. But we'll, we'll get back into it. We're slowly uh, emerging from the cocoon, everybody. <laughs> uh, nice yo pot daddy I hope your blackberry kush looking nice we actually gonna have a lot of blueberry uh, coming out as well <laughs> Chris McGarry that's probably a safe bet I bet you we all do <laughs> I just really hate those bastards man Yeah, I've done that a lot too, uh, Aussie Big Buds, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's It's been tiring, but the packing's going well, everybody. We're packing, getting everything ready. We're, we're, we're going to be moving soon. It'll be good to get back into business. Just doing our shit. And uh, having some fun with everybody. And just plants. I miss plants. I really miss having plants, everyone. It's killing me. Hell yeah, Johnny Summertime. I'll have to check it out. I don't have an ability while I'm doing the show to go check that picture out currently. But we will do that. Ganja Donna, your mama, does it work the same in the microwave? Uh, no, do not use a microwave. So microwave, not only is it going to denature the basic atomic structure of water, but it will uh, in terms of all your nutrients. So yes, where you can you kill things in the microwave in terms of pathogenic organisms? 100% you can kill them. But you're also going to denature all the good things in your soil, and you don't want that, okay? Uh, so we want to keep it to a basic steam and heat, not a microwave. Um, I remember seeing this one wonderful article about this little girl. She was like grade four or five or something at a science fair. Little smart girl. She was fucking, she did this great experiment uh, where she had two plants, right? Same plants, uh, same clones, and then she used water that was microwave to water one and then normal water for the other. It was astonishing to see the differences between these two plants. Uh, so that little girl's wonderful science fair experiment, I think, should, should you know, share the story on that point. Like, do not use a microwave, especially when it comes to plants. But if it does that to a plant, think about how complex we are. And then think about when we microwave food and if we eat it. Hmm. 
Uh, Justin Rave, we are actually working towards being one of the first true legal seed brands in the world right now. It's going to sadly cost us realistically about $1 to $1.5 million to get that all up and running. It's a long story and it's Canada. But we're working towards that. We are legal medical grow and medical licensing and we are working on developing all of our initial F1 crosses that we will then further stabilize out. Sadly, under the legalization here, we get a one-time influx of legal genetics. So we uh, are working, or what they call illegal or gray zone genetics. But uh, we're working towards that and uh, sort of getting ready to do that. But it will take some time. That's why we're hoping we can get these uh, CBD lines blown up uh, down in the States in the big chain stores so then we can actually afford uh, to come to market in the ways we would like to for everybody and, and making true reliable genetics that are extremely affordable. But yes, so Justin Rave, in the long run, most certainly we're even working towards it now, but it takes time. Yeah, but see, and also too, wait, big Fred Fury though, because uh, radiation treatment in terms of cancer is because, yeah, radiation just kills shit in general, right? So it's a targeted radiation in terms of cancer treatment. That's the methodology behind it. And then, for example, chemotherapy. The, the basic concept on that one is that we're betting that your body won't die before the cancer does. It's a crapshoot. That's, that's how those treatments work, right? So yeah, it is weird, isn't it? But my cancer that I had, that was, uh, I'm sure that was caused by drinking far too many super hoppy beers for many, many years every single day. Uh, there's a large amount of estrogen in hoppy, hoppy, hoppy beers. Um, and I had ball cancer myself. So I believe that the estrogen from the super hoppy beers is what uh, interacted with the androgynous tissues that produced testosterone in my testicular wall that then made the fragment that then replicated and became Larry the Ball Tumor. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's weird, man. I know, it's the world's crazy. Oh, don't worry, Chris McGarry. I hate spell check too. Well, that's a big part of why we didn't go legal in the first place. Like, I mean, early on in the channel, if you remember us talking about it, we were trying to get a farm going. That was before we started the lighting brand, before we're doing anything that we're doing now. Uh, and that's where we thought we were going to go, right? Um, but the government at the time was forcing us to irradiate shit and spray shit down. And they're like, this is what makes it safe for the consumer in Canada. And I'm sitting there going like, what fucking world did you wake up in that irradiating weed is fucking smart? Go fuck yourself. Do not force me to do that. So that's where we pulled out of that one. But now with the new farm to table legislature that's coming, we're very excited about that. Let the weed be weed, man. Let's not irradiate it. <laughs> that's true. That's why you gotta hope to God they got their angles right, wake and bake. And don't do this. <laughs> oh, yo, pot daddy, one day, pot squatch beans, squatch genetics, the pot squatch genetic world will very much be a real thing. Don't you worry about that. Your state just passed constitutional carry for firearms. What does that mean? So you're allowed to carry guns now? And you weren't before? <laughs> I'm confused. <sighs> nah, it's going to be good, though. I'm excited, everybody. It's going to be a lifetime's long work developing a bunch of weed titties to keep on being worked on after I'm dead. But I say that sounds like a life worth living. <laughs> Man, it's hilarious. I've had maybe like two or three beers in this show. I'm thinking like, man, there used to be shows where I drank like 10 to 20 beers. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, well, there you go. No, the funny thing is, Stone Gamer, it's not that I'm getting too old for it. It's that I'm doing it on purpose because we've actually started getting bigger, getting global traction, and are doing big business deals. So I had to become a good boy now. I'll still drink on the shows, but I got to be responsible now. I got to stop swearing quite as much. I still say fuck, fuck, damn it, goddamn fucking bullshit, you know. See, I'll still swear. It's okay. It's still me. Uh -huh. But trying to be responsible. And like, for example, like one thing I had to get used to, too, uh, as we grew as a YouTube and then became this company and a global brand is, you know, back in the early days with a troll, like I fucking lose my shit out of them. And now I can't do that because I got to be responsible. So I've gotten a lot more crafty and eloquent with the way I come back at the trolls now. But it's still on Kapothquatch. But, uh, you know, I got to be all responsible now. I got to be responsible. Still me, but we're doing a lot of shit now. And if we want to go where we're trying to go, I guess, you know, maybe I shouldn't get completely wasted in my shows. Just a nice buzz. <laughs> hey, thank you, guys, Now, your mama. If you type HTTPS uh, semicolon forward slash forward slash, then that, that will actually become a link. Uh, excuse me, everybody. It's time for a live stream in the live stream. Do 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 diuretic happen. Otherwise known as maturity. <laughs> I don't know if I'm necessarily getting more mature per se. I've always been a grumpy old man, but you know, I will acknowledge that we've got stuff going on and I have to be a good boy. <laughs> Woo! What kind of what kind of beer do you have? I said beard, but I meant beer. Sorry, kind of not in your mouth. <laughs> that sounds dirty. <laughs> For those of you who are no here, diuretics happen. This is why we wanted the realest YouTubes on YouTube. We hide nothing from you. I am but a silly fool. But I am a calculating idiot. Let's go with that. <laughs> and well, let's be fair. As you start a company, become a bit of a global brand, and you start talking to bigger people and other things, you can't just basically go tell everyone to shut the fuck up or fuck off anymore. <laughs> now you have to use fancy words to do it. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bit of an inside joke for me, but... What's up, the copy growers? That's right, Stony Baker MD. That's right. One second here. Whoop. much more relieved now. Let's work on the next round, shall we? But yeah, no, it's exciting, everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty excited, too, to maybe play with uh, the new uh, light rail thingy that we're going to play with. I've been talking to a new company called Gualala Robotics. I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but I choose to say it. Gualala. Oh. Go uh, HTTPS. Go on, Janani, your mama. Then a semicolon. Then two forward slashes. Then www.popscoreseals.com. You probably don't need the www, actually. But you're close, baby. <laughs> yeah, right? No, it was cool because, like, I mean, Country at Heart Finley... Uh, he's he's put our lighting systems, our racks, on these mobile light movers. And I love it. He's been sending me a bunch of pictures and shit. It's niftier and shit. I love seeing it. So I was like, well, I kind of want to try that, you know? 
So he sent me the company that supposedly his came from, but like the website seemed shady and it was weird. And I emailed them and they never got back to me. So I found another company with almost the identical fucking uh, website even. But it was an actual robotics company. They had tech all over their website. And I even sent them in. And then their executive vice president fucking uh, emailed Uncle Potsquatch back. So I've been chatting with them about trying out their stuff. And uh, it's affordable. I think it'll probably cost us between install and everything. And they're coming. it comes from Colorado, this company. So it'll probably cost us a mm, thousand bucks, give or take. Probably to install the mobile systems. About a thousand bucks, maybe. Unless shipping fucks us in the ass, and that might happen. Because it's coming from Colorado, then our government, well, then we'll get duty on our parts, but you know. <laughs> but it's going to be cool. That's those were the lights moving. By the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna have some fun with that when we install that and kind of like edit it and do a hyperlapse maybe and then put some cool music on it or something. It'll be fun. I might just get stoned and watch them peacefully drift back and forth. <laughs> But the new light rails, they'll be fun, my friends. And they are coming to you, hopefully, from Gualala Robotics. And, well, we'll see how we like them. If they live up to what they're supposed to do, and they're easy enough to use, and they don't break down fairly quickly, I'll be happy. If they break down, well, you're going to hear about us. <laughs> But yeah, it's going to be a good lab, everybody. But anyway, my friends, I actually got to get back inside planning for more seedlings. Uh, I'm halfway through our seedling planning. And by halfway, I'm halfway through two strains. But it was most of the, they had 100% germ rate, so there's a lot to plant. I got some other little beans I got to go plant. And I'll shoot that all when it's done for you for the finish of the video that we're making for you probably out on Monday. But I just want to say, everybody, thank you for tuning in to the show today. Much love. Keep it real. Keep it. Sexy. Keep it squatchy. Remember that the true grower is the forever student. Remember that the true grower makes educated, stupid decisions. And remember, we're about to come back in a way you've never seen. It's going to be real, everybody. We're going to have a good time. And we're going to jump off the deep end in terms of exploratory media pieces on cannabis for you. And uh, get ready, baby. It's going to be fun. And uh, to all of you who stuck with us in our weird end time, I just want to say thank you ever so much, you fucking wonderful sexy bastards and motherfuckers. <sighs> thank you so much. We're going to make you proud, I promise. <laughs> and everybody, have a good time. We're going to be launching a bunch of new products soon, the CBD line. Got some new exciting things happening in terms of everything else that we're working on. You're going to get to see some of our new strips for the lights that we're going to play with. It's going to be cool. Guys, Nana, you're not slow. you probably just stone, baby girl. It's all good. <laughs> That's part why I don't smoke too much in the show. Or else I'll just be sitting here like this. And that doesn't sound very entertaining for anybody. <laughs> Have a beautiful night, my friends. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for tuning into the show. And we will see you at the new lab in exactly two weeks. May 3rd. Mark the date on your calendars. That's when it all begins. May 3rd, I take possession of the house. May 3rd, we'll move the crap in. And on May the 4th, be with you. We're going to start right away working on the lab. I'm going to show you every step of that whole fucking way. We'll even show you the times where I get mad or make the wrong decision and swear at something. <laughs> we will show you the honest story of the creation of Lab 2. <laughs> but anyway, everybody, keep it real. Keep it sexy. I love you. Peace and love, everybody. Sorry, I was just reading messages there. Anyway, I'll see you next time. When's next time? Tomorrow. I'm going to do a show. 
I'm playing around with new show times and days. So I'm gonna do a show tomorrow. It will be at 1 p.m. my time. That's tomorrow, British Columbia time. It is now my time, 3.34 p.m. I'll see everybody tomorrow at 1 p.m. Peace and love, everybody.